everyone! Welcome to the channel dedicated to sharing the profound insights and wisdom of Andromedan contactee Alex Collier. If you're new here, you're in for a journey that expands your mind and consciousness, bringing you closer to understanding the messages from the fifth density Andromedan extraterrestrials. For those returning, we're grateful for your continued support. Before we dive into today's enlightening content, we have a small favor to ask. If you find value in the knowledge shared in this video, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the bell icon so you never miss an update. Your engagement helps us amplify Alex Collier's message, allowing us to reach a larger audience with these vital messages. We'd also love to hear from you, so please engage with the comments below. Whether it's a question, your thoughts, or even just an emoji for the sake of engagement, every comment counts. We read every single comment, and your feedback is incredibly valuable to us. Additionally, if you'd like to support us further, consider giving a super thanks tip by clicking the heart with the dollar sign. This small gesture allows us to continue bringing you more of Alex's messages, unfiltered and directly from his lifelong experiences with the Andromedans. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video. First of all, I want to say on behalf of myself, James and JP, uh, we thank you for attending our little webinar. Uh, it means the world to us. This, you know, your support literally keeps us off the street. And I want you to know that, and I want you to know how appreciative we actually are. Uh, we've, you know, we've, you know, we've worked through a lot of issues because we've been doing this on a dime. We're basically on a nickel. And, um, you know, it's just, we do the very best we can at uh, every webinar to, um, to support you and in turn, you know, earn your support. Now, uh, we're gonna start uh, with current events off world. <laughs> it is not my policy to um, go after other speakers. And I'm not going to specifically go after uh, one or two specific speakers other than to talk about pieces of their information. And, and this is all to bring you um, into perspective, to, to give perspective to everything that's going on on the planet. Okay. When the electronic wall came down, that did not mean that they left plasma bombs, the Chromea plasma bombs, okay? And I, I hear that that nonsense is still being bandied about, that they're clearing that stuff out. That's horseshit, okay? The skies are clear. The spiritual frequencies and energy um, and intelligence that is coming in photons and atoms to Earth that have a higher vibration are coming through loud and clear. I want you to understand that. Okay, they didn't drop the fence just to leave the bombs. All of that stuff is gone, okay? Anything else that you hear, and of course you have your own minds, your own opinions, but I'm just sharing with you that it's all nonsense, okay? Benevolence have absolute control of our of, uh, of the space in our solar system. And it's been some time now. And I am sharing that with you. The benevolence have absolute control of the solar system. Now there are other races here that are um, neutral and they are observers. They're observing what's going on here. And I cannot pretend to know their motivations for just being observers and not participating, but nonetheless, that's what I'm, that's what's being shared with me, and that's what I'm sharing with you, okay? Now,
what's happening inside the earth and on the surface is, is being very, very well managed. All right, many, uh, many rogue beings have been rounded up. Uh, fortifications have been completely dissolved. There are just a few left in the Atlantic. Um, this, the biggest stronghold is the Falcon Islands, from what I'm being told. That's being dealt with. Hopefully they won't have to sink it. Uh, there are also some other areas where there are underground military bases under current military installations. And that's where the rogue groups are hiding at this particular point. All right, what's left of them? Um, most of the reptilians have been rounded up. I want you to be aware of that as well. Things are moving very, very quickly. Now, if you take that information and you put it in perspective, that the dark side is getting their asses kicked, finally, all right, and now they're freaking out, they're panicking, that might give you some perspective as to what's happening on the surface with the cabal, the deep state, uh, the Illuminati. They are getting their asses kicked, okay? Their he heads are being handed to them in a basket, and that's because the game is over for them, okay? It is just finishing up and playing what's left of this drama out. And, and that is what you're seeing. You are seeing moves, things out of sheer desperation. Uh, the assassination, the killing um, of, of people, the um, false flags, the all this talk about biological warfare, about nuclear annihilation, the absolute last day's destruction of the United States, the end of the European Union, the world global economic collapse. All of this is fear because you have to understand. Do you, you remember the old Greek stories, um, mythology, Zeus and et al, that if, when humanity stopped praying to them, they lost their power. Well, this is essentially um, very similar. When they cannot control the narrative, when they cannot control what you think, how you think, and um, trigger your emotions to be in a space of fear, they essentially lose control. They lose their power. And that's what's happening on the surface. You have to understand that that is exactly what's happening on the surface. People are rising up. Not only are they rising up, but because of the light, the spiritual light that is hitting the planet, that is permeating all of our cells through photons, okay? That it is enlightening humanity, it is raising the consciousness of humanity, and there isn't a damn thing they can do about it unless they get you to voluntarily change your perspective back to fear, 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 fear. All right? You don't want to do that. You want to focus on what we want. You want to focus on what you want. You want to focus on the healing of the earth. You want to focus on the healing of humanity. You want to heal. You want to focus on the prosperity of humanity and all life on the planet, right? And spiritual awakening, spiritual knowledge, spiritual consciousness. This is what we need to be focusing on because these things empower us, okay? And that's what we have to do. We have to empower ourselves so that we are an example to others to empower themselves so that we be the example. This thus making us forefathers and foremothers. We lead the way. We blaze the trail. We hack all the weeds away so that they can see clear pastures, beautiful lakes, the way to sustainable living. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And believe me, I know there is so much nonsense 
going on out there. Uh, here in the United States, we have uh, mainstream media, and they're not worth a damn. They are, they're not worth a damn. They lie about everything. They specifically lie about our presidential administration. 95% of what you are being told about what's going on in Washington and the White House is an absolute outright lie. And, and I'm telling you, it's all going to come back. It's all coming out. You better prepare yourselves, okay, because everything that you've been force-fed has been bullshit, okay, and it's coming out. And you're going to have to change your perspective, and that's a very, very good thing. All right? Because when we work together, things happen quickly. When we watch each other's back, when we protect each other, everyone is safer. That's what we have to focus on, ladies and gentlemen. We are a family. Okay? It doesn't matter where you are on this planet. We are a family. We all can relate to each other. Okay, we're not Illuminati. We're not Nephilim. They are not part of us. They have been detached from us, which is why there has been so much darkness on this planet. And punishment of humanity because we chose to do something different than what they want. Now, There's a lot of chatter about end times, end of days, the apocalypse. It's only true if you believe it. It is only true if you believe it. If that's not what you want, then don't believe it. Create something else. You have this ability. 99.999% of the entire universe is spiritual energy. Less than 0.000001% is physical matter. Okay? These are the facts. These are the facts. There is so much room to create what you want, all you have to do is do it. All you have to do is be absolutely clear about what it is that you want and make it happen. That's it. You have the power. You have the ability. You are already multidimensional. You are already in multiple dimensions as we speak. It's just that your focus, our focus is here in third density in this rat trap, okay? This matrix, whatever term you want to call it, that's it. But it doesn't exclude the fact that we're other places right now. And we can pull that frequency, we can pull that energy down here to help us manifest what it is that we want. Now, the manifestation uh, and, and the earth wants to move from third to fourth to fifth. What better companion could she have than beings who are spiritually consciously aware that are already multidimensional? Make, makes perfect sense to me. All we have to do is implement the plan, your plan, your desires, your dreams. That's all you have to do, okay? And by example, teach others. I'm not asking you to be a guru, I'm not asking you to make speeches, just be, just be. Find your path and just be. That's all you have to do. Others will notice it. Okay? It's happening. It is stunning how many people are awakening. And, and I'll tell you honestly, 25 years ago, when I first you know, started 
talking, uh, you know, publicly. Genuinely, I had no idea humanity could ever really get to this place. I didn't think it was possible myself. I just didn't. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it was like I was talking to bricks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, even today, there are some people that I run into that are half breaks, okay? You can tell they're at least thinking about it. And, and that's a huge improvement. It, it really is, you know, uh, over what it used to be. And um, what's really interesting is that when you, you talk about um, uh, the political drama that's happening here in the United States, you know, you, you don't hear the word conspiracy too much. And, and, and I want to be really clear about this. Proof of life in other worlds, it's not a conspiracy. It's a fact. So it can't be a conspiracy. Extraterrestrial technology is a fact. It's not a conspiracy. Our space fleet is a fact. It's not a conspiracy. Cures for cancer is a fact. It's not a conspiracy. Corruption in government is a fact. It's not a conspiracy. Okay. <laughs> uh, the fact that you're multidimensional, your brain, your heart, your soul is multidimensional. That's a fact. It's not a conspiracy. Okay. When we break it all down, the conspiracy has been to try to make everything that's true and real a lie, to convince you that it was all a lie. That's the conspiracy. Now, uh, I want to share some things with you before we get into uh, the quantum art. Um, a lot of people, um, I've been catching up on my emails finally. Uh, I get a, a fair amount of emails about people who are, who are dreaming a lot and traveling. And some of you share um, in very lengthy ways your experiences, which I appreciate. Okay, um, and others are very short, sweet, to the point, somewhat almost too abbreviated because I don't understand it, but maybe it's meant to be cryptic, I, I'm not sure. But the point is many of you are dreaming. And I have noticed that as of late, um, a lot of you are having a hard time traveling. Um, th there's a reason for that. And the, the reason is that they are trying to contain the light. And it is not a bad thing. The idea here is to condense the light, to amplify the light. And what's important is that those who, a lot of those who are, of you who are traveling, you're consciously doing it, which is great. You're empowering yourself to do that. But you're traveling very, very far out. And the work that has to be done, not only on yourself, but the mission, which is here on Earth, the reason you're here, okay, you can't forget that there's a, a purpose for you being here is to move the frequency here, to expand the light in this space that we now know, okay? That is first and foremost. So my understanding is, and this includes me, that extreme dream travel um, is being curtailed. They want to keep things contained here. That's number one. 
You can read into that all you want. My suggestion is, is that when you travel, you will have your guides and you already know that they're with you. You talk to them. Talk to them about what's going on. Get their perspective. All right? I would always encourage that. Always verify. There is a profound amount of spiritual guidance hitting the planet. The Earth herself is beginning to share her knowledge. And what I mean by that is that there are archaeological discoveries that are being made every day that the mainstream medias are not talking about. They're just simply not talking about it. And I mean, papers are being published about discoveries, ooh parts, things that make no sense based on the history that we've been, the bullshit history that we've been fed about our humanity and about our history. It's, it's staggering. Um, and, you know, maybe there's a way to collect some of this knowledge and create a a universe of wisdom, a university of wisdom, where we can compile this information, like a website of some sort, where we can compile all of this data, where we can send this data of the latest, greatest archaeological discoveries, quantum physics, medical techniques, uh, healing, color, light, and sound, um, uh, uh, anthropology, etc. It's just amazing. The stuff that's coming out right now. But of course, nobody's talking about it because it's all the drama, okay? The fictitious fake news drama. They want everybody distracted. And to a lot of people's credit, they're not buying into it. However, it isn't what we want. We need to focus on what it is we want. And whatever that's going to take, whatever it does take to empower yourself, that's what you need to be focusing on. Whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether you're by yourself, it, it, with your animals, it, your friends, it doesn't matter. If you empower yourself, you can empower others, if that's really what you want to do. Okay, and if you don't want to empower, empower others, that's fine. Just empower yourselves. Okay, be strong. Hold the light. I mean, after all, you are a spiritual being first. You're not a human being first. You're a spiritual being first. Okay? Empower yourself with you. It's imperative to have a positive outlook. And that probably will mean don't listen to the news. <laughs> okay? But you got to have a positive outlook no matter what. Because there's, you know, where there's, where there's a dark cloud, there's always a silver lining. And um, most of the storms that are being created are being created by the regressive side. Because they don't know what else to do. Because they have so invested themselves in darkness. They don't remember the light. They absolutely don't remember the light. And most of them have no idea how to make their way back. Okay, they will not drop their masks. They just can't do it anymore. So they're going to have to start over. And God bless them on their trails, on their path, but that's what's going to have to happen. So be aware of that. Now, one of the things that's fascinating, and I was going to share this with you last, last webinar when we talked about Ganymede. And that was, is that, there is life in those oceans. There is life in the oceans of Uranus. Incredible aquatic life. And we were running short on time, so I just didn't get to it. Yesterday, an article came out that uh, was published in the Progress in Biophysics and molecular biological, okay, progress in biophysics and molecular biology journal. 
This paper was published by 33 scientists. And these scientists from a wide range of reputable universities and research institutes have made a claim. And apparently they have been studying this for quite some time and they have decided to let the world know about their particular findings. Now, of course, we didn't hear anything about it because if it isn't bashing Trump in the United States, then it's no good. If it's not about illegal immigration and how horrible we are to immigrants, you know, it doesn't make the news. It, it, you know, every country is different. Each country has their own mainstream media, okay? Fake news. But the purpose of this particular paper was to share the fact that octopus, Occupy, does not come from Earth. It came from some other planet. And they have, they don't know which particular planet it came from, but it absolutely does not come from Earth. Okay? So I want you to look that up. Um, let's see. The uh, Progress in Biophysics and Molecular Biology Journal. Apparently there was a small little blurb in Cosmos Magazine about it. Now, you would think that'd be interesting news. And if you go back to some of the things that we've talked about, God, going back to 93, 94, 95, uh, I've shared this. Um, I believe others, maybe a little bit later than me, have shared this type of information where we talked about how the Earth um, is this biological zoo and how many different life forms were brought here. Uh, their DNA was altered in order to evolve and survive in this type of an ecosystem. Uh, because DNA is, is, is the new goal, okay, or at least out there. Uh, this confirms it, and, and at least that they've, they've come to terms with Occupy the Octopus. Um, it has a staggering level of complexity with 33,000 protein-coded genes, which is far more than human beings have. And the coding is not related to anything ever seen on Earth. So it's it's fascinating. It, it really is. It's, it's pretty amazing. And um, uh, the guesstimate is is that octopus, octopus have been here about 270 million years. And let's assume that that number is true. Let's assume that half of that number is true. Even a third of that number is true. Um, they didn't come here on an asteroid or a meteor. Okay. It's not how it happened. Okay. They didn't hitch a ride. So um, we know that there's life out there. Now, let's see. There's a couple of the things. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I was asked to share this with you. Two things, actually. In the next couple of years, the Earth is going to have issues with uh, water, drink, fresh drinking water. And the reason for that is because the bad guys are screwing with the weather. And they have been for some time. And they've been creating droughts uh, because they want to control humanity. And if you control the water, you can control the food food, uh, you can control the food supply. If you control the food supply, you control all of humanity. And, um, you know, they've already made it against the law in most places to collect rainwater. Uh, there are some cities and towns that have outlawed home gardens, which is insane. And, and you know, it just continues to go on and on and on, the stupidity. 
of giving government control of everyday life when you know they can't even manage themselves and uh, proof of that is just look what's going on here in the United States with our Department of Justice and our FBI and the CIA etc 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 okay uh, it's just it's, it's crazy anyway technology that's been used off-world by our space fleet there's water in a lot of places. I, I would almost want to say everywhere, but I'm, I'm being reserved on that. But there is water a lot of places. A lot of uh, moons, a lot of planets, there's water. And water is essentially water. There may be specific chemical differences or additions to it, but H2O is still H2O. Now technology, desal technology, for lack of a better word, has been taken to a whole new level beyond our imagination of what that represents here on Earth. That technology very soon is going to be released to humanity. And What's interesting about the components that make up this technology is that it has its own power source. It's not going to have to be hooked to a grid. It's not going to have to um, be supplied with oil or uranium or anything like that. This is a complete, intact, packaged uh, piece of machinery that produces all kinds of water, um, for as long as you need it, because there's no shortage of energy. Now, this is going to be shared very soon. Uh, I've been told that they've been trying to get this out uh, since the inauguration in 2016. I'm sorry, 2017. And just a lot of things have been getting in the way. I'm sure you can imagine who, who and what that is. The point is this. Many of the issues that the planet appears to have can be remedied relatively quickly if the technology is allowed to be released. Now, it has been said that a lot of this technology has been locked up in black programs and will never see the light of day. Listen, the bad guys are not in control anymore. They're really not. We are, we are mopping up. They, they are mopping up. The cleanup has begun. I, I, the words escape me at this particular point. But the point I'm trying to make is that technology is going to be soon released. In fact, it's already beginning to be released very, very quietly. You're just not hearing about it. And that technology will be changing how we live on Earth. Uh, and it's a fundamental change because the technology doesn't mean we have to take anything from the earth in order for it to work and be effective. That's the point I'm trying to make. This is a really good thing. And it will inspire new technologies along the same lines of thinking. Once we see it, once we understand it, once we start to use it, it will inspire all of you to see different ways and to come up with different ways to use this type of technology. Now, the desals is just one thing because we have to have water. And it cleans everything because it was designed to work off-world, okay? And there are many worlds that are extremely different. 
I mean, where do you think all the water for our space fleet came from? They wouldn't keep making trips back and forth to Earth. No, they would need to be self-contained and self-sufficient. They would need the ability to have a food supply, something that was renewable, so, uh, and, and that would involve water. It involves a lot of different things, air, etc. Okay, we are much further along than most people realize in this in this regards. Well, now that the space fleet's come home and is um, being embraced, and and what I mean by that. as it's slowly being acknowledged officially that hidden technology is going to be used to assist all of humanity. Now, in 2015, our military wanted to have a military coup against the wall. They wanted to do martial law and remove him from office for treason. They decided better of it because it would mean a civil war. They approached the man and asked him to run. This man who didn't need to run agreed to do it. He is now the president of the United States. And regardless of what you think, and frankly, it doesn't even matter. These changes that are coming are a direct result of this man being in office. You need to be really crystal clear about this. I am not making this up. This is a fact. So whatever your political leanings are, none of that matters. At this particular point, what matters is the betterment of humanity, the healing of humanity, the healing of the earth, and the idea that we have to live in harmony. That's the goal here, folks. And the government's not in charge of it. The damn church isn't involved, in, it isn't in charge of that. The EPA isn't in charge of that. The royal families of the planet are not in charge of that. We, the people, are in charge of that. Do you understand? There are 8 billion of us. Okay? There are 10 million of them. What? I mean, do I actually have to explain that? Okay? No, I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to. You have the power. You are the power. Are we still here? Okay, good. You are the power. So, the quantum heart. You know, living in third density is quite the challenge. And it's because it's so physical. I mean, it's just so physical. And there are some things about it that are absolutely really, really cool. Okay? A, a cool lake to swim in on a hot summer day. Uh, a wonderful breeze at the ocean. Sunrises. Sunsets. Children playing outside, laughing, watching nature, listening to birds sing, um, listening to the sounds of the ocean, classical music, jazz music, some rock and roll, great food, the smell of flowers. There are so many things that are really, really awesome about their density. Now you have those same type of things and sensations in fourth density and in fifth density. They're different, 
but you have them nonetheless. However, we have been conditioned to see the world with our mind and to try to process and understand the world with our mind. And we do that with the kids, especially with all the electronics today. There's no heart in Xbox. <laughs> There's no heart in PlayStation. Uh, the smartphones, uh, the iPhone, there's no heart in any of that. That's all the mind. Mental stimulation. What we've all forgotten that our ancestors knew was to see the world through the heart. Now, in seeing the world through the heart, we have to understand that the heart the heart generates the most extensive electromagnetic field in our bodies it is not our brain it's the heart information that we process actually gets processed through the heart first before the mind takes over. And for those who pay attention, or who have been paying attention, what you will discover when you experience something is that there's a physical emotion first before the mind takes over. We don't give it enough credence, and it's gotten to the point in many people where they don't even uh, acknowledge the fact that they've had an emotional response first before the mind takes over. Spiritual energy. Light is photons. The heart, because of its electromagnetic field, is what draws light photons, which all contain information literally information about the entire universe including dimensions you can have atoms and photons that disappear from third density and go someplace else and then they come back this we know but when they disappear from third density they're not gone they go to fourth or they go to fifth or even beyond and then they come back then they work their way back down and they come back into third density okay quantum physics has proved this Scientific experiments have proved this. And each of these particles of light have information, intelligence in them already. That information doesn't hit the brain. It doesn't go into the brain. It enters your physical form, your, your body, your spiritual self through the heart. That's what we have to retrain ourselves about. That's what we have to relearn, is to pay attention here first. And then, once we're sure about what we feel, then turn it over to the head, to the mind, if you even want to do that. Most of the yogis don't go there. Most of the Sufis, the shamans, spiritual leaders, spiritual teachers, you know, I, there's a million names to give them. Um, Jedis, okay, whatever term you want to use. They process information in the heart. We have to, we have to recapture that. We used to do it. We did it before we came in here. We have the ability to do it. Your brain's already hardwired for it, okay? And you know if the heart is the strongest organ, if it is the organ, the electromagnetic energy that creates you, 
then you already know that it's it has far more power than your brain. And your brain's already wired for seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dimensions. It's just a question of, okay, I think I can do this. Okay. Uh, what was it the car test said? I think, therefore I am. You love, therefore you are. I love, therefore I am. That's the mantra. I love, therefore I am. You know, I, I, you know, talking to Mornay is a real trip. Um, because they're just so healed. You know, they, they already know this. They already got this. They live it every single moment. So it's easy. The challenge is just trusting it, you know? Um, and, 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 and the reason why sometimes it's hard to trust is because, you know, and I don't know if this is the correct phrase for this, but many of us have had our hearts broken or we've been wounded because we've we've had that vulnerability and it turns out that that vulnerability is actually our strengths it is actually the biggest strength we have because when we have that open vulnerability, when we open that heart space, we allow the information and knowledge of the entire universe to enter our field. It's completely all open to us. When we create the wall, um, that's what it is, it's a wall. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. And we have to come to terms with that. And everybody individually has to has to deal with that. I don't know that there's, you know, one way to do that or one fix for everyone. For my own personal experience, it's forgiveness. It's forgiveness. It's literally just letting it all go. Um, you know, <laughs> because if we build the wall, then we can tear down the wall. And that's who has to do it, you know? That's who has to do it. If I built my walls, then I'm the one who has to tear them down. If you build your walls, you're the one who has to tear them down. And it's, it's about tearing down those walls and it's about seeing the world through the heart. And what I mean by that is stimulation enters the body first um, with the emotions. It really isn't the brain. And we have to trust that. It's, it's, the, it's, it's trusting that intuitiveness that we all had when we were kids, you know, just wide open. Everything was awesome. Everything was magical, although I hate that word. Okay, everything was new. It was it was awesome. It was an experience. Uh, we didn't have any preconceived notions, and no matter what we did, no matter how we played, everything was a journey, and it was exciting because we didn't know what to expect next. Yes, we get older, we have obligations, but that doesn't mean we can't approach the world in that same sort of way, 
whether it's our workplace, um, it's, it's dropping all the preconceived stuff, all the judgments. And I know I make this sound easy, and I know it's not. But I'm being told that's how we have to go. That is how we need to approach this. It's the example given to me specifically was about, okay, Alex, what is it that you want? What is it that you really want? And I shared that. Okay, I shared that with him. He immediately came back and said, well, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm like, I feel great about it. It's what I want. I know that's what I want. Okay. And he said, well, where did that come from? And I said, well, it came from my heart. And it dawned on me, <laughs> it dawned on me of a very old conversation I had with Viseas. You know, where we were on board um, M ship, Morne ship, and we were sitting there and I had to come back and I didn't want to come back. I think I've talked about this. I was living in Lake Area at the time. I didn't want to come back. Everything sucked here. <laughs> okay, it just sucked. I didn't want to come back. And I'm like, okay, I'm already here. Let's just go. Let's just leave. No one's going to miss me. And that wasn't going to happen. And he just said, where does the love come from? You know, where does the love come from? And he led me down this path where there was no way I could get out of saying, the love comes from me. Okay, there was just no way he totally boxed me in. And, and I knew it, and I knew it. And I also know that it's true. Intent. Intent, focused intent. is co-equal to the expression of unconditional love. My experience is watching the A's, and especially the kids, when I was with them on, on, on the mothership. And there was joy everywhere. And you could see the expression of joy everywhere. There was no frowning, um, except when I was first introduced, because they they had been studying our history on, on our planet. But that dissipated. That that vanished after a while. And their joy was infectious. And that feeling, that experiencing of their happiness, of their joy, filled me. It, it filled me. And I'm looking for the words here. It, it, it made me not want to come back only because there was no polarity. There was no polarity. It was joy. <laughs> you know, it was calm. It was safe. It was peace. It was love. It was joy. That's what it was. There was none of this other shit. And that's why I didn't want to come back. You know, I don't have a choice in that. But my point is this. They are not, we are not that different than they are. We're not. We're less, less we are less educated. That's really what it is. And in some ways, with with our gift of extremes of emotions,
That's actually a huge asset that many other races don't have. Because that has come up a lot, not just with me, but with other contactees. That has come up a lot. Our extremes of emotions, the bandwidth of frequency that we hold. It's intense, it's really intense. And if we can learn to harness that for self-love and love of others, God, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing we can't do. There's nothing we can't do. There's nothing we can't create. And I would think we could take this little planet of ours to fifth pretty quick, pretty quick. Have a positive outlook. The shit's hitting the fan. It's all part of the drama. The world isn't going to end. Okay. There's going to be shifts. There's going to be changes in energy. It's going to be changes in frequency. You know, change is constantly happening. Nothing's ever the same. Just see it as a positive thing because it is a positive thing. Okay, things cannot remain the same. The system we've been living in, the matrix that we've all been living in, no longer suits humanity. It's broken. The only ones who want to keep us in the box are those who think they have a right to control and manipulate humanity. We, we're already over that. Okay, we've already broken the box, which is why everything's falling apart. And it needs to fall apart because it's broken. It doesn't serve humanity anymore or the consciousness in which we're beginning to hold. Okay? It may be subtle, but humanity is changing. The consciousness is changing dramatically. And so will the reality. The reality has to suit the consciousness. It's not the other way around. Okay? We're the ones creating this. <laughs> we're creating the change. We are creating their downfall because it just doesn't work, it's broken. Everyone was suffering. That's no good. That is not what we're here for. That's not what we're about. And, um, you know, they can kiss our asses. I don't know how to say it any simpler than that. The old system has to go away so we can create something that benefits humanity. Okay, that works for humanity. Because ultimately, we're the ones creating this reality. It's not them. Okay, there's 8 billion of us. Okay, 8 billion of us. You know, uh, and 10 million of them. Let me just put this in, in, in another way. At the, just before the Revolutionary War, the war uh, between uh, Britain and the United States, Thomas Paine wrote a paper called Common Sense. And in that paper, he posed the question, how can an island rule a continent? Okay. How can an island rule a continent? It's the same idea. It's the same idea. Uh, JP, I think we're ready for some questions, um, if, if there are any. Oh, yeah, there's about um, one or two. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be, oh, oh, there's one more thing. Oh, my God, I almost forgot this. And I was specifically told to share this with you. There's been a lot of talk about time travel. And the thing about time travel is we have all of these concepts um, that, that we all imagine through science fiction writing, etc. And quantum physics is now um, 
looking into the idea and the concept of time travel. And they're pretty sure it can happen. Uh, but many of the quantum scientists that are uh, visible, that aren't in black programs, um, are having trouble putting some pieces together. So I wanted to share how the A's always know, well, specifically more in A, where we are. Because he goes home frequently. Many of the races that are here, especially in fourth and those in fifth, uh, when they go home and then they come back, well, how do they know where we are? Because, you know, our solar system is traveling around the galaxy. The galaxy is constantly spinning. Okay, the galaxy itself is constantly moving as well throughout the universe. Everything is moving in a spiral, in circles. That's the, the circle of life. How is it that they know where we are? And it isn't really about time, at least not to them. It's about frequency. Yes, it's about frequency. They use holographics extensively. So when they take a picture or they lock into a holograph, which would be our solar system, they see the beginning frequency of when it began and a potential frequency of where it's going. That is locked into a system, a quantum system, a computer, for lack of a better word, although that's not words they ever use, a quantum system, a multidimensional system. And what they do is when they return home and they want to come back, they bring up that band, that frequency band, and they plug it in and the ships come right here because they lock in on frequency. It's not on a place or a time. So time travel is technically not the appropriate terminology. It's more of a frequency in space than anything else. I, th I, th I thought some of you might be interested in that. Um, it's the same thing like the healing camera. You know, they take a picture of your body from conception to where you are at the present time on the table. And then what they do is they take pieces of, of the holograph out and they find out where your particular organs were the strongest. And then what they do is they take that frequency out, they lower it back into the camera and they project it back onto you. And that's how they heal your body. It's all color, light and sound, which of course is what quantum physics is proving is in fact 99.9999% of all that is. So it's all frequency. It's all frequency. Emotion. Emotion's a frequency. So the more positive your frequency, the more light your heart draws to you. Okay? Okay, um, JP, if there's no questions, we can all go home. <laughs> well, back to Andromeda. <laughs> hey, make Andromeda great again. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> make Earth great again. <laughs> all right. Um, frequency. Um, Ricard de Lenoir. Hello, Alex. Did Marina ever give you a specific frequency that we can use in a potential application, such as a frequency that supports cell regeneration? No. No, but I will ask that question. I will specifically ask that question. Um, you know, it's interesting that you talk about that, Ricardo, because I think I've read... Um, and I believe this is either in Switzerland or France, that they are actually using 
sound to cure cancer. And, you know, of, of, of course, the pharmaceutical companies are absolutely against this um, because there's no prescriptions. But I, I, have read, I have read somewhere where they have papers showing that it's been very, very successful, specific harmonic frequencies. And I believe that the frequencies that they're referring to are those on the sacred scale, uh, the sacred tone scales, the suffragio tone scales, and that they've actually been able to cure tumors, shrink tumors, using just sound which would make absolute sense. And it's the same principle as the holographic camera. So um, I will see if I can find that. If I can, um, I, I, I'm sure I can find it. I will send that to, um, to James and ask him to put it up on the site. And maybe I'll even send it to JP, and JP, you can distribute it as you feel free to. Okay, would that work? Is that okay with you guys? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, Good. We. I have a regular guest called Shari Edwards who uses frequency to heal all sorts of things. Sure. sure. Um, um, so uh, yeah, it's regular regular host on uh, Wolf Spirit Radio and a regular guest on my show. Um, more frequency questions. Hello, Alex from Michael Hudson. Over the past year, I've been listening and tuning into my inner self to heal my body. It's working and I'm amazed by the results. My question is that I've not physically seen anything related to fourth dimensional experience, different lights, colors, but have experienced different sounds. I would like to know your thoughts or experiences regarding that higher frequency. Thank you. Okay. Well, Michael, I'm not surprised. You're a very powerful young man and uh, um, a Jedi in your own right and having Having spoken to you, I know that to be a fact. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by sound. Uh, have I seen forth uh, only in the presence of Moranay and Viseas when I travel out of my body at night, when I um, my dreaming body is traveling, I experience forth. But I don't really hang around in forth much because literally... I'm trying to make my way to Zenite because, you know, that's where I feel home the most. <laughs> my experiences. Gosh. The experience of fourth that I've had has to do with everything being lighter, everything moving faster, colors being brighter, smells being more acute, more pronounced. Uh, the experience of feeling more expansive. It's as if my body is bigger, broader, taller, skinnier, which I like a lot. Um, it's almost like if I could imagine myself a dolphin and swimming in the water and how easy and effortless it is to move, that's what it would be like. And all of my awarenesses, my senses, are far more acute. Now, I would put that on a scale from here to on Earth being a one, or third density being a one, fourth being like a 10. And then my experiences in fifth are like a 50. That's the difference. And the difference is because of the the band of frequency. And, you know, we have, what, 72 colors in our bandwidth of third density. 
It's 121, 121 in fourth, and 223 in fifth. So it doubles. I don't know what sixth is. Color is, is a bandwidth. It's, it's a frequency. So the more color, the higher the frequencies. That's the only way I know how to explain it. Um, and it's the only way that I can understand how to, how to share it with you guys. Because the English language is very, well, it's limited in, in how to explain certain experiences that I've already had. But I, I'll, I'll say this to you, Michael, whether you're, you're in your dreaming body or you're in a physical meditation, when you go somewhere or you experience a place, a moment, where you see colors that are not in our bandwidth in third density, then you know you're in fourth. Okay? Now, if you're hearing the sounds, that means you're breaching the barrier. That's a really, really good sign. Intend to now feel it with your heart. Feel it with your heart and then intend to see it with your eyes. Now that does two things. You're training your heart to be in charge, not your eyes, not your head. Okay, you want the heart to be in charge because that's the strongest part of you. That's, that's the most clear part of you, is the heart. That's what I would do, that's what I do. That's what I do when I do my work uh, in nature. That's exactly what I do, is, is I work with my heart first. Um, because, you know, I want to get this right too. I really do. Um, you know, I have people that depend on me, so I want to get it right. That's great work, Michael. That's great work. That's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Okay. You still there? JP? Okay. Yes. Okay, from Nick Fowler. Hello, Nick. Can you explain, please, Alex, how a massive space can exist within a smaller space, seemingly referring to your creating huge spaces on your room on the ship? Okay. For one thing, the physical rules of fourth and fifth density are completely different than third density. There are spacecraft that have crashed on this planet that were made in other star systems, and this is a fact, not conspiracy, that were 35 to 42 um, meters round, and on the inside, they were five to seven levels deep, okay? A saucer had set five to seven different floors. It was enormous on the inside. You're not dealing with the same physical laws as third density. Now, let's go back to what quantum physics says. 99.9999 percent is spiritual energy, it's frequency. Less than 0.000001% is physical matter. Ask yourself this, and I'm gonna make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that you are a ninth density being spiritual being. Your brain is hardwired for ninth density, which is beyond our comprehension. Right now, fifth density would be beyond the comprehension of almost everybody. Sixth density, probably beyond the comprehension of everyone on this planet. Fourth density, we've been thinking about for some time. And as we continue to think about it, that information will come to us and it will expand our awareness till we find ourselves literally opening doors into fourth density. That's how this works. 
How did you get that ninth density being that you are into your little third density body? Why don't you figure that out? <laughs> okay. Once you figure that out, and I think you'll have your answer. We have a TV show called uh, Doctor Who. His ship is always, it's a little box, tiny sure. little box, you know, seven feet wide, little square, but it's huge on the inside, bigger on the inside or smaller on the outside. Sure. Similar well, principle. MI6 knows, MI6 knows all about this stuff. <laughs> you know, they all know. They just don't tell anybody. They know. Again, another From question. Lauren. Yeah, yeah. Okay. From Lauren, I was reading an older interview where you said that the Andromedans credit the Cassiopeians with saving their race at one time. Do yes. you have a story behind that? Actually, I do. Um, in the ancient days, space travel was very um, archaic. They had propulsion systems. They had some free energy, what we would call free energy, and but they didn't have the raw materials to build ships, big, massive starships. What they used were moons, very large asteroids, and they would attack, they would hollow them out, they would attach propulsion systems, and then they would build on the inside environmental systems that would be that they would use say in underground facilities or underground moons etc they would build those things into these old asteroids or moons and they would use those as the craft well they were wandering and wandering and wandering uh after the lyran war when everybody took off because of what the draconians did and it was the cassiopeians that found a small fleet of asteroids and moons that of Lyrans that ended up because of their physicality the Cassiopeians took them to what is now the Zenite star system okay and that is where they began to colonize with the assistance of the Cassiopeians they were given some technology to help them grow food faster to do some healing etc 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 now, the Cassiopeians are not a human race, at, at least the group that we're talking about. So it was interesting. Uh, there was, a, my understanding, a lot of apprehension, a lot of fear in the very beginning. But what happened was they knew they had to survive. So they overcame their fears. They put it aside. They thought, okay, we have no choice but to make a leap of faith. And it was exactly the right thing to do. And they haven't stopped making leaps of faith. And they were taken to, to specific planets that would uh, serve their physicality. And the rest is history. They have evolved. Uh, they have procreated. They have expanded. They have jumped dimensions. Uh, it's quite the story. It's quite the story that... Uh, would be inspiring for all of humanity to know. Uh, I don't know the full story. Uh, but what I do know is it's absolutely stunning. It's it's real science fiction. It's reality science fiction. For I, I, I mean, how else do you put it? It's, it's reality science fiction. But that's how it got started for them, you know. Um, you know, I, we started with uh, the Mercury space capsule, a tin can going up into space. And, and that's all it was, was a tin can. You know, we couldn't go into deep space with that. Um, but we were blessed to find some technology here on the planet, or I should say the Germans then the Americans, then the South Africans, then the British, then the Russians, uh, then the South Americans and, and the Indians in India. 
okay, found old ancient technology, and it began. And then we started getting some uh, crash retrievals. And we expanded our awareness and our technological capability to the point that, um, you know, we are where we are. And we're very advanced. For the uh, age of our culture, we are very, very advanced. We just don't know how advanced we are yet because that technology uh, and the knowledge gained hasn't been shared with us. But it's coming. It, it is, in fact, coming. And maybe when we hear it from our own space fleet, or you guys hear it from our own space fleet, that will open doors to other possibilities and other realms of meeting other races. Important to note, they are not gods. They are not gods. And then, and the real good ones, they don't want to be worshipped. They would walk away from you if you ever tried to do that nonsense. Okay, the regressives, well, they love the worship. Yeah, they dig that. You know, their ego loves the worship. That's what you look for, okay? That's what you look for. That's that's your sign. You know, Bill Ingvall, here's your sign. That's your sign, okay? Um, it, it's coming. There's going to be so much change. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty miraculous. It's important to keep a positive outlook, though. It really is. We have to pave the way for the future. Okay, we can't leave it to the press. We can't leave it to our government officials. It is not their job. Okay, their job is just to maintain everyday functionality. It is our job to create our reality. We are the humanity, not them. Okay. All right. I'm off my soapbox now. Get down there. Um, questions about <laughs> Saurians, the uh, the native Earth reptilian, non uh, draconian reptilians. Are they dinosaurs? Uh, are they Do not really another physical dinosaurs? Earth species that we could work with? I don't know. Uh, were they Velociraptors? Is that maybe where they're going with this? They certainly weren't Tyrannosaurus rexes. Um, I don't think so, no. Uh, my understanding is is that the native reptilians, what we call native reptilians, they all came from someplace else. Now, they may have been bred here, birthed here, but we're not the original source of their DNA or their original source um, of formation. It wasn't the Earth, no. There are no indigenous reptilians of Earth. There are no indigenous reptilians to Earth. Because if it were true, they'd be able to handle the sunlight. And they can't. They never have been. They're hyperborean. They came from someplace else. That's all I got. <laughs> from Cat T. What is your knowledge of the event or the big solar flare or solar flash? I don't know anything about it. I don't personally, I don't believe that's how it's all going to happen. I just, I don't, I don't believe that's how it's going to happen at all. And I know that's out there and you know, more power to everybody who thinks so, but I personally don't believe that's how it's going to occur. It's going to happen in a moment. In just a moment's notice? No, I don't think so. Um, I just don't. Not even the Big Bang happened that way, or whatever they call it. it. Didn't happen where everything was made all at once. That's just not it at all. Um, so I don't believe that's what's going to happen. Um, but you know, I don't know everything. I don't. You know, I don't know everything, and I uh, wish I did, but I don't. In fact, I was talking to uh, JP and James earlier before we got started, 
How come it's, you know, I have two cats. How come cats always throw up at night? It's always at night. And why is it that whenever I get up in the middle of the night, I always step in it? <laughs> you know? So I'm, I'm working on that mystery. <laughs> I'm working on that mystery for me. So uh, as far as the event, I mean, there's an event every day. There's an event every minute that you're awake. There's events. There's acknowledgments. There's knowledge. There's aha. There's moments of grace. You know, uh, mo miracles. They happen all the time, every day. I'm not looking for a single event to change humanity forever. I think it's a gradual process. And that's been happening. And we're in it now. We're in it now. So that's my thought. Okay. From Bjorn back to Doctor Who again. Is time traveling still being allowed? And if so, is there someone who watches and supervises it? Uh, no one on the planet regarding the militaries is doing time travel. No one's going anywhere. CERN, um, no one's time traveling with CERN. Okay, that's just not happening. And, uh, I, and, and you know, I, occasionally I'll hear a story about that. I don't buy it. I absolutely don't buy it. Uh, these stories about people having a little picture, you know, which you can't really see going to 3188 or whatever, I don't buy any of it. I, I just, I simply don't, not now. It's not happening at all, okay? It's just not happening now. Because, or for one thing, you take the consciousness of the planet right now, which is constantly changing. When you go jump from here to let's say 3188, you're taking with you the consciousness of the planet today to that world. If you were to take the consciousness of yourself a year from now, which will be completely different to 3188, you will see something completely different. Every time you look at the future, it changes. This is a fact. So there's no way to determine what the real future is going to be. It's just not possible because it's constantly changing. It changes every second. Your future, my future changes every second. Every time I think about it, it alters because I'm not the same person I was a minute ago. And I know there's a lot of people who don't get that. I can't help you. That's on you. You got to figure that part out. Okay. We are, nothing remains the same. It is constantly evolving and changing. Okay. So that's my take on it. Last question, I think, from Bjorn. Alex, I think you said the A's are one of the participants of the 22 DNA program of Earth humans. What do the A's want of this program? What is the other's main purpose? Uh, I can't speak for the others. I don't know. Uh, I've asked that question a couple times many, many years ago. And um, I was never given an answer about the motivations of others. As far as the A's themselves, they just want us to be healed because they understand that how do I put this genetic lineage genetic lineage is a gift. It is something that is cherished and 
given great sacredness by all off-world races because their perspective of life, of creating life, of physical life, of DNA, is completely different than what we value, our value of it here is. Okay? Now, there are Andromedans in other star systems. They keep tabs, they build relationships with those lineages because they are, in fact, lineages. They are genetic connections. They are an extended family. That is no different with those of us that are here. We are extended family. And because of who they are, they would want to know that we're good, that we're okay. And that is a lot to do with the intentions of, if not most, could be all of the different benevolent races, because we are an extension of them. And they take that stuff very, very seriously, because we're family. And, and, and I've said this to you guys in, in many of the webinars and, you know, going back to 91 when I first started to talk, that we're, they see us as a family here on Earth. You know? We're the only ones who don't. We're the only ones who don't see it. And a lot of that has to do with all the programming that we have been under to hurt each other, to hurt ourselves. It's a, it's a bloody shame. It really is. Guys, well, the hour and a half goes quick. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I love you. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it insightful, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on future updates. If you have any questions relating to today's video, please also leave them below. We read all the comments and take on board what our viewers have to say about Alex Collier's work. Remember, your support helps Alex Collier's knowledge and the messages from the Andromedans reach more people. If you'd like to support the channel even more, you can give us a super thanks tip by clicking the heart icon with a dollar sign. It really helps our team bring you more content. Also, be sure to visit alexcollier.org to sign up for our regular email newsletter. It's the best way to stay updated with the latest news, exclusive content, and upcoming live webinars. For the latest insights from Alex Collier, check out alexcollier.live. And if you want to explore over 250 past webinars, head over to alexcollier.tv. Thank you for being a part of this journey and supporting Alex Collier's work. We couldn't do this without you and we're genuinely grateful for your support. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the vast mysteries of our universe. If you would like to see the Andromedan contactee Alex Collier live via video stream, we hold a live online seminar every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. For more information on upcoming live webinars, please visit alexcollier.org.